Hey everyone, my name is Shri, we're here, and this is going to be week number one of season six of the EBL, and we are up against Aquarius and their Chicago Strain set. And this is going to be a really fun one because uh, there's just a lot going on in this matchup, and I don't think the matchup is particularly good for me, but uh, there are a couple things going on here, right? So right off the bat on their team, we do see the Trinatus, which I do not deal with very well. Primarina, which is always going to be tough. The Magneton, which I did not quite expect to come. The Null, I kind of thought was 50-50. Uh, we do see the Palpatoad and the Mantra as well. Now, I was floored not to see either the Mammoth Swine or the Jirachi. I thought they just dealt really well with my team, although I can understand more so just seeing the Celestial on, on the other side of the matchup and not wanting to bring them, but in my head, it just made no sense to not bring them, right? And there are a couple of interactions that I'm looking at here primarily, right? So first and foremost, they do not have a ground resist on the team other than Delmize, which did not come, and I thought it was 100% a lock to come. Well, I should say, Say that was an errors resist because obviously Tornadus is a ground resist, but they had a single thousand errors resist and it just blew my mind for it not to come. Although, with some hindsight, it does make a ton of sense with type null just like an everything resist and me just kind of having to devote a lot of resources to, to taking it out in general. And I do think Palpatode kind of evens out the playing field quite a bit, in particular against my Victini and my Zygarde. So, it's going to make it very difficult. You will see this is a banded Victini with energy ball on it just for this interaction, but I'm kind of hoping that by the time Victini really gets its thing going, that that I'm not going to have to make those types of predictions. And yeah, ultimately, as much as I did think through a lot of these interactions and I kind of tried to build the way that I kind of felt comfortable here, I think A, my build kind of showed that, that the matchup was never that great. And I ultimately don't think my build was the best. I think my build is very capable, but I don't think it's the most, you know, creative or the most interesting. Truthfully, Cell Seal, kind of felt like a sixth Mon here. I really didn't know what to do with it. I kind of defaulted to, to, to a defensive set and just kind of felt like, Hey, if it goes one for one or helps me to, to kind of deal with some other mon on the team, then I think ultimately it'll it'll do its job. But it's not terribly creative. Even the Victini, I think the Victini has will have its moments to shine, but I don't think it's terribly creative. Um, and everything else is really kind of straightforward. And ultimately, they didn't really have anything here that kind of stood out as a terribly strong win con. I remember Jolt saying once that, that the way that he plays, you're just kind of playing the grind game until kind of a win con emerges, and it definitely feels like this kind of a game for me here because I think just the awkwardness of the matchup and me personally just not feeling up to the most creative of builds just kind of led to a pretty mad build but I still think like I said a very capable build while the matchup is in their favor I do think that I do have plenty of openings where if I make predictions if I make things happen then definitely definitely we do kind of have more than enough to work with here so here I kind of just defaulted to a Zeru lead now I really didn't uh, feel too strongly about any of my leads here and it, and again like I said, it wasn't one of the things that I really came to think about in team building because uh, I just wasn't up to a really, you know, creative build here. But uh, I kind of felt that Zerud gave me the most options. It can be turned out. Or no, I'm sorry. I actually forgot until I sent it out that this set in particular didn't even have U-turn. Um, this is a very lazy, just kind of default set that a Zerud would carry. But I think a better Zerud set would definitely have U-turn, especially in this type of matchup where, again, like I was saying just a couple minutes ago that uh matchups and and momentum is going to matter a lot i think if i had you know thought about that just a little bit more this set would have had you turn and i would have you turned out here easily although I knew that nine, ten, nine, nine times out of ten, they will end up going for the U-turn on their own, seeing as I kind of just let myself out there with my Zerud, um, just kind of hanging the, the Zerud there a little bit. But we do get some damage off on the Porygon, and I do kind of have to make my opponent, you know, fear the scarf until the leftovers pop right there. Um, but I, I was kind of hoping, I guess I was kind of hoping that they would try to play this one more cautiously but they really don't have to here right because um it wasn't until i actually got into the physical match where i realized tornadoes is so much more of a problem than i thought here right and in my head i thought that this rotom was always going to be the default switch in it's a really specially defensive rotom and it's always just going to come in take the hits if it gets knocked off it's going to be fine i believe this set has pain split just to kind of keep it around for longer and i know tornadoes in particular has just, has just a lot of hp but building around this tornadoes was really difficult for me because nothing on my team other than this really resisted the combination of hurricane and heat wave and also just doesn't get like you turned out on so 
I never really deal with the tornadoes terribly well, but I felt like this kind of put me in an okay position to kind of um, be able to to kind of be able to pivot around it. And the Palpatoad made this really difficult, right? And again, I totally understand like bring, bringing the Palpatoad. I think it has a really you know strong defensive matchup against me. But I did again just think that the Jirachi and the Mammoth Spine were really just strong in general in in against me in particular. So I really um, thought that one of those would come over the Palpatoad, even though again I totally understand wanting to bring the Palpatoad. So here is a moment where I do try to try to bait some things. I feel like this is a moment where if Aquarius doesn't expect the energy ball, then I can potentially catch them off guard here. Um, I think in hindsight, this is 100% a, a U-turn turn, but regardless, well, especially the fact that I come in on this so aggressively, I think, um, I don't think it's a great play just to go straight for the raw energy ball, but at the same time, I, was, I, I think I was playing this turn a little bit afraid in this moment. I think uh, I don't... I think I didn't want to. Part of it was I didn't. I, I I felt like I could hang on to the fact that well I am making them think a little bit longer than I think is appropriate for this type of a turn, right? I think it's either you know you 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 risk the energy ball or you switch out. Um, but I it feels like I'm making them think about this turn a lot. But regardless, um, this is 100% a turn for a U turn instead. Oh, I I did click U turn. I, I thought it. But yeah, 100% th this was a, a Easter type of play, like I was just saying. And I do think that type of damage, maybe, maybe the crit obscured it a little bit, but I, this type of damage should confirm banned most of the time, right? Unless, like, it was some crazy roll and, and and the crit really concealed the fact that I was banded. I think by now they should know that I'm banded by that type of damage to this type of tornadoes. But again, I really have no counterplay but to come in on this Rotom. Oh, and one other thing. Oh, and I, I should also say, I think, I think they knew that my only real Tornadus answer was a defensive Rotom. So I think the Palpatode makes infinitely more sense, and cr credit all to them. Um, it makes a ton more sense to bring the Palpatode as an anti-Rotom answer because I really cannot deal damage to this Palpatode. Um, without Toxic, and I probably should have brought Toxic, um, Foul Play felt strong for something. Probably the Jirachi, um, look, let me look over right now. Maybe the Delmize? I don't know. I don't know. Regardless, I, I Foul Play for something. But, a Toxic ultimately made more sense. I really didn't feel like Toxic would have done me that much. And, truthfully, I mean, it, it probably wasn't going to be, you know, the game-breaking thing that I am making it out to be now. It's just something that maybe would have helped. Uh, it at least would have forced the issue a little bit more, but also, uh, I don't feel great about not having, um, defog on this thing, and I think, I think it is becoming somewhat obvious that I don't have defog in general, or, or, or at the very least, I feel like it becomes obvious on this turn, um, but it was one of those things where I really genuinely didn't realize until Team Preview that it, that this team at all doesn't have any removal, so these South Rocks and, and, and them gaining so many free turns because of the Palpatode, and, and the fact that the Palpatoad is able to take advantage of it by getting up rocks, I think just all kind of culminated into something that's going to make it a really difficult match for me to win at this point. And I'm obviously thinking through my options here. Um, Zarud feels good. Uh, I, I, oh, I think at this point, I'm just trying to figure out, like, is it really going to heck me up quite a bit if if I get scalded on, on the switch in? Or, or do, do I still have, you know, something to work with? And I think... Um, and I think once I saw the Palpatoad damage, I, I think I felt reasonably confident just making this play. Um, and that's what I was kind of thinking through in my head. But Zarud's in. Uh, that is a lot of self arc damage to, to kind of have to take. But we do take the Skulls fine. Um, and I'm also, I also must have been thinking through whether or not it was worth it just to get, um, just to get burned potentially on that turn. But... We're gonna try to make things happen here, right? So, um, I could potentially be going for damage here. I, I honestly don't even remember what I clicked in this moment. Yeah, I go for the jungle healing. You know, you know, this makes a ton of sense to me because I'm gonna need the Zarud for the long haul in this matchup, and I knew that that, pop, that coming in on the Palpatoad like that would give me a free turn, and it would allow me to kind of 
and it would put me put me in a position where um I could kind of have this Arude be what I need to 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 deal with some of the threats like the Palpatine, obviously, but but also if this if I have to give up these Arude for a decent amount of damage onto the Type Null, then that play makes sense to me. I'm I'm already starting to envision these 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 interactions where where the Zerud, the damage output from the Zerud is going to be useful to me for kind of constructing an endgame that makes sense to me, right? But, um, oh, and the other thing, obvious, uh, another obvious point that just, I, I, I was just reminded of when I was in, uh, when I was on my team screen just, just now, is... Uh, this would this would have been a fantastic moment for my Porygon to kind of be a tornado sensor, but uh, this thing almost definitely has just just knock off. Like uh, I, I know I have the team and I and, and I saw the team, but I, I don't 100% remember. But you could imagine a an e an easy tornado set that's just hurricane, heat wave, knock off, and 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 U turn. And truthfully, I've, I've I never really. I haven't really given them a reason yet to not have to click U-turn. They can just do that every dang time and be perfectly safe. So that's what they're kind of doing to me right now and kind of putting me in a really awkward position. Here I go into my Cell Steel. And again, my Cell Steel is max defense because I really didn't know what to do with it. But uh, I go, I come in on a Mian Chao and 100% this, this, this reveal is banned, right? There is zero doubt in my mind that this reveal is banned. And that banded at damage output is just insane. Like that's a two AKO on a Cell Sela, which I know, um, which I know Cell Sela isn't like the craziest thing in the world. But this is a really defensive Cell Sela and a Cell Sela that I kind of needed uh, to kind of help me make these pivots around that I that I kind of need to make. But that Mian Chao just tore through it like butter and. Uh, it really makes this kind of difficult. So I go, I go into my routine here, and um, I'm confident enough that this thing is scarped, and I'm confident enough that uh, Aquarius now knows that I know that it's, or sorry, that that I know that it's banded. And I'm kind of trying to play off of the fact that they would assume that I'm scarfed to counterplay this. I'm not. I'm I'm banded, but this is a hard bluff on me being scarfed. Um, because yeah, the only. Thing that they have to go off of right now is the fact that I had gone for that U-turn. So I'm hard bluffing a, a scarf here, which I am absolutely not scarf. Uh, I decided to go for the energy ball, which is kind of interesting, but it does a decent chunk to this to this Primarina. Uh, and oh, and actually, this is a max defense of Primarina to kind of take, I guess, multiple um, multiple V creates, I believe. So this was probably the most damage I was going to get in this interaction. But the fact that I was able to successfully bluff the scarf, and I went for energy ball, which also furthers uh, the bluff scarf, incidentally. But uh, yeah, this Borgon is also here. It is very, very special defensive. It is here specifically for the Primarina, uh, and I believe I believe that's the only special attacker that I really had to concern myself with. Well, potentially a Magneton, but I didn't expect the Magneton, as I said already. But but uh, but this Porygon because the rest of my team didn't appreciate special attacks and this Porygon was the thing that was meant to switch it was meant to be like my blanket kind of switch in to any special attackers and any type of special type of attacks that don't have knockoff i.e. tornado but it's at this point in the match where I'm really starting to think to myself uh, I really need to kind of you know buckle down and come up with a win con here because me doing this all all day just switching around is not going to really get me anywhere and it's really wearing down my team a ton especially as they're able to get the, the free flip turn off which honestly surprised me i really did expect them to just want to attack because uh especially just in team preview like like strong attacks from free marina just feel pretty darn free right uh i mean and and, and even if they wanted to give up the Primarina in, in that moment, because Primarina, I mean, it, 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 it's, a, it's a great Mon, but, but I think at this point you just give up the Primarina for, for damage. At least that's what I thought in, in my head anyway. Um, but I but I just gave them a very, very free, free flip turn. Uh, the Palpatine comes in. Uh, I go for the Toxic, and we exchange Toxics, which uh, is obviously not great, but I don't feel the worst about this because... 
if I can find the right moments, I can still kind of stall out a few turns, recover. I can find the right turn to teleport if I can make it work, right? Uh, and it's and and again, it makes it even more funny that the free marine went for full turn on me because the whole point of the, the, this Porygon is to hopefully catch maybe like a like a specs free marina, catch it on a switch in, be able to teleport as it's forced to switch out, and then you know this happens, right? But I'm able to, to recover the, the magneton comes in. I don't I don't 100 percent know why. Maybe just to resist the ice beam. I don't know. Regardless, um, this magneton doesn't doesn't really have a purpose anymore, and I, and I realize that because because the soul steel is already down. Uh, but it does. I, I have to imagine that I go for teleport here. I can't. I can't imagine any other play to really make here. But um, as a continuation of the whole like win con uh, discussion I, I was having earlier, this feels like a strong moment here for me. It, it, it feels like somewhat of an opening because if I can teleport here, there's no way I heart. Why? 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 Why do I heart switch? I. I guess I wanted to keep this thing healthy for the frame arena. But, oh, did I not have teleport? I must have, right? It, maybe I didn't have teleport. Maybe I did, couldn't find the room. I don't know. Regardless, well, no, yeah, I, I guess maybe not because I needed Ice Beam. Maybe I needed some other move I need, and then Recover Toxic. Recover Toxic, Ice Beam, and then something else that I, that I, that potentially let, let out the room for the teleport. Regardless, me going out into the Zygarde is a pretty obvious play, so... So uh, they were able to play off of that really, really well with a with a flash cannon. But again, this is th this felt like my moment to kind of um, try to make things happen with my Zygarde, and at the very least, start to put dents in, into the team. Because, like I said, I'm trying to find a, find a win con, and my win con, like I said, felt like it was going to be on my, my banded Zygarde because because um, this is kind of what my Zygarde was brought here to do. Again did not bring their one thousand arrows resist um it's still I'm, it's still gonna be a pain to kind of play around the tornadoes but if i am to win this match it's going to be on the back of zygarde just doing damage right because uh zygarde right now is my biggest source of damage output other than that other than my victini but, but my victini has to play this entire ending sequence a lot more carefully than my zygarde does where my zygarde can just kind of click buttons and clicking buttons feels really strong to me at this point um the type null comes in on this, and just seeing how little damage I that the Zygarde is able to do, the type null being you know banded and everything, um, was really not ideal. And I knew that arrest was coming, but I really didn't have any way to play around it. Now, if I'm being you know more honest than I was earlier, uh, I do think that I should have been able to call that rest on that on that second thousand arrows because i just knew it was coming but i but i didn't really know how to play off of it but uh, with some hindsight the way that uh, that i play off it is, is obviously like if i know that the rest is coming on that turn i go out into into zarud and i start either jungle healing or trying to bulk up or trying to figure something out that'll that'll get me some head away or, or just go for the raw darkest layer it expecting the tornadoes to want to come in i mean anything in that moment was better than just clicking thousand arrows into the rest turn right uh, so that's not a great play on my part. I think best case scenario would have been me. I think honestly, if I had gone into the, if I had gone into the Zarud as they click rest, I would like to think that I have kind of the, the mentality to click Darkest Lariat, expe hard expecting the, the Tornadoes to want to come in and at least start like chipping it down. At this point, I think I go into Porygon just, um, what, what is it? Oh, Foul Play Ice Beam. Okay, okay. What do I need Foul Play for? Probably, oh, the Jirachi. I definitely, yeah, because this thing just gets walled by Jirachi if I don't. I guess it makes sense. It doesn't make the most sense because I don't think this thing was ever going to be the answer to, to Jirachi no matter what I did. But it's what I brought, you know? What am I going to say at this point, right? I, 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 I have nothing to say at this point. Um, point is, I don't have Teleport, and that's why i made those those plays earlier so what was i saying <laughs> um yeah i would like to think that 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 i do go for the darkest lariat i believe i went into i i, I think uh, i think in all honesty the reason i initially went into this borygon was in case i wanted to pull a, a, a double i would get the free regenerator and 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 i would force this tornadoes to, to at least like click knock off into my into my um into my rotom as as my Porygon gets healthier, 
I think that was my thought process there, which is funny to think about because that's not at all what I did, but uh, it's what happened. Anyway, I I get this toxic off on this on this pre marina. Obviously, uh, my EV lights knocked off, which is not great. I don't know why I just left my Porygon in there, but at this point, I I felt like I I think I felt like uh, this Porygon is not going to have any more use as a pre marina switch in. So I'm just kind of I'm just kind of gonna leave this thing out here, and whatever it does is able to do. Although I still have a generator, which it makes no sense to me why I'm not taking advantage of the fact that I have a generator on this Porygon. Um, because this flip turn plus the toxic damage is gonna rack up, and it's gonna put me in a range where it doesn't even matter that I have a generator. I I, I mean I probably should have just pulled the double, which I, I'm almost positive is why I went into this thing in the first place to kind of to kind of get the generator and and um bait out a knockoff at the same time, but. You know, these are the plays we make. I guess I really felt like I needed that that, that ice beam onto the onto the tornadoes that I probably all already healed back most of uh, th through its owner generator. But anyway, here here we are. I'm cons I'm hard considering um, Victini because uh, a close combat is super obvious. I give up the Rotom, which is interesting to me. Uh, and I I mean I think I obviously don't go into the Victini because a uh, close combat should by every indication to hit me. And at this point, I can't even bluff the scarf anymore, so there's no real point. The only real thing to do is maybe get a clean switch in, because maybe close combat that does less than half to to a, to a bikini, but it's not terribly likely, being that this thing is banded as it is. So, obviously, we're in on the final handful of turns. I'm able to go out into Zygarde. Um, but the... The type null play is pretty obvious, and another you know niche point about this whole uh, interaction with me not going into the going into the Zerud on the rest is that now this thing has burned a turn of sleep. Where if I had made the play into the Zerud and kind of forced the this type null's hand in, into switching out, then then uh, this thing only has. This thing has to burn through two turns of sleep, but now that's not the case, and I'm just kind of thousand er thousand arrowsing into the void. Uh, I'm honest. I, I guess I'm honestly hoping for like three super high rolls, but they told me after the match that they EV to take three of these, pres presumably after rocks. But it, it's not obviously rocks doesn't even matter at this point. And uh, they keep consistently getting the good, the the, the four times uh, effective moves on on their sleep talk between you turn on my. On my Zerud and Icy Wind on, on, on this thing, but now I've, I believe the, the entire set's revealed. Uh, U turn, Icy Wind, Rest, Sleep Talk, which is fine, but but also, I I think, I, no, I must have known. Maybe part, because I was gonna say, maybe part of me thought that I was um, going for a crit onto that Type Null, but uh, Type Null can't be crit, so uh, who knows at that point. I'm sorry about that for, for, for a second. I, I, I think I had to click something in, in OBS and I just completely hecked it up. But I go for the raw V create at this point because now I'm just kind of YOLO gang at this point. And I felt so bad at the fact. Oh, yeah, no. I, I click V create because at this point, I just want, I'm just i just trying to not get 6 0 V create was my don't get 6 0 button. He goes into the pre marina and, uh, and I just barely miss out on the KO and the rest of the damage gets done by the toxic from Porygon so my only mon to get a KO in this one is gonna be my Porygon but now I'm well in range of this man shout to just close combat twice and win this match because now because now I guess it's it's revealed that I'm banded uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure if if they were running calcs and and found out that I'm not scarfed but at this point, yeah, just two close combats just does it every time. And that's just gonna kind of be how this one ends, right? Uh, it really was never a great matchup. It was never a great build on my part, but uh, and it was honestly not particularly fun to play because I because I was at a disadvantage like so much of the time. But it was more of a fun. <laughs> I mean, if anything, it was more it was more so of a fun like uh uh. 
experience to have happen just because uh well i mean looking back on it now in in the in the moment it was miserable i hate to blame this match but it was also because like i knew it, it was a great matchup and i knew it wasn't very build and I, and I was kind of going through the motions in the moment but i think uh a couple days later now i'm, I'm definitely in a better mood i'm definitely you know kind of looking at my plays in the way and my builds and my and 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 just everything in this match with more hindsight and i think that helps a lot and i think i'm in a I'm just in a better mood overall, but uh, yeah, that's gonna be how, how week one ends. Um, it definitely wasn't a strong representation of what this team can do. I think this team is a really really good one. I just think, well, I, it definitely needs a good matchup. It definitely needs a good build. It definitely needs a good builder. Uh, but also, I just needed more opportunities to kind of do what it needs to do. It, it definitely needed some more boldness in in just how it was played. I needed to make some plays that just made things happen, and I, and I think not doing that was my biggest kind of um, thing that hurt me in this in this match overall. But that was um, week one, and it was still fun. Uh, there will be more weeks of the UBL to come. Thank you guys so much for watching. There will be more weeks of the ICBA as well. Um, first two weeks should be up now, but we will see what else is coming. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you once again. Out.